Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be a little bit different uh, than a lot of the videos I've been doing. It's not a pickup video, but it is going to be another one of the collection videos in much the same vein as the Blu-ray collection video that I put on my channel a couple of months ago. Uh, in this case though, I kind of want to focus on one of my other collections that I have. Uh, arguably one of the more, I guess, expensive in a way, but in another way, in another way not so much because it's more spread out. Uh, and that's my wristwatch collection. So we're going to ch change perspectives here a little bit in a moment and we're going to take a closer look at what I've accumulated up until this point and a little bit of the rationale of how I ended up at this point. Okay, so here's a closer look at the collection. So just as a little bit of background, I've started collecting maybe about eight, nine years ago. And more than anything, it was that I like the mechanical aspect of it. I enjoy having a, a watch on my wrist. And to be honest with you, what you're looking at is a much more scaled down version of what I used to have. I used to like flipping and uh, basically buying and trading and selling a lot of like lower end, lower end watches. And I've still got a couple of leftover from those times here, uh, but they've been kept around for a couple of different reasons that I'll go into. But more than anything, I just wanted to have, um, as time went on, I started to kind of refine what I wanted and started narrowing down my focus so that I could get slightly different pieces that I would enjoy a little bit more. So let's talk about that a little bit. All right, so to start me off, I'm going to start off with the Seiko Kinetic Auto Relay. So this was the first uh, mechanical or automatic watch that I ever, uh, that I ever bought for myself. Um, I had had other watches before when I was a kid, but this was the first one that I actually went out and bought. Uh, more than anything, I just liked the aesthetic of it. I liked the way the dial looked, and uh, the whole Kinetic Auto Relay technology behind it looked interesting. To be honest with you, at this point, this is one of those watches that I don't really wear much anymore. It actually took quite a bit to get this one wound up again and get it going. Uh, obviously, I set it up with today's date, uh, so I'm recording this on the 16th. Um, so I reset a lot of these watches and tried to put them under the correct date, with a few exceptions that I'll talk about more after. But uh, this one stays in the collection entirely for sentimental value. This was the first one that I bought for myself, so this is one I like to keep. I do still like the bracelet. I do like the dial. Uh, it's a nice solid, uh, there we go, I just want to get a little better idea there. So I do enjoy still having this one around. This is going to be one of those ones where it stays in the watch box most of the time and doesn't really get a lot of wrist time. Uh, as I go through the rest of these, I'm going to talk about first the ones that I don't really wear much anymore or that I wear less, followed by the, you know, the daily wearers as we get into the latter portion. Alright, so next up we have to have an Invicta because I think almost everyone who collects watches has a time or another uh, for most of us where we end up getting at least one or two of these. I actually did have a, several different ones and this is the only one that's left. Uh, as you can see it's not working right now because this one is a quartz movement. Um, to be honest, I hadn't looked at it in a really long time. I did like the aesthetic of it. Uh, I really have a thing for silver dials. But um, what I found interesting, and actually I hadn't looked at it in a really long time, was that I, I completely forgot that this watch has a... Uh, the day, uh, the day of the week here function, and you can also see the date, as well as um, another another dial here on the front at six o'clock, where you can actually see it's a 24 hour. So I had completely forgotten that it could do that, and obviously the top pusher here, this one controls the day, and then the bottom one here controls the actual hour in the 24 hour clock. So I guess you could put a second uh, you know, hour on it, but what would happen is as soon as it hits 24 hours, then it would move to the next date. So it would kind of mess you up. But it is kind of a neat one, and, it, and if you notice, it's the only one right now showing in the collection uh, that has a rubber, sorry, that has a, uh, a leather band as opposed to, um, as opposed to a stainless steel uh, bracelet. Um, this is something that I actually want to cor correct in my collection. Uh, I do want to have like a more dressy watch. Um, at some point I may put a battery back in this to get it going again, but for now it's just going to stay as part of the collection. Again, just kind of um, as a memento of this time, I keep it, but at the same time it doesn't really get worn much, obviously, since I let the battery run out and I haven't replaced it yet. So next up, my Tag Heuer Link. So again, uh, similar to the Invicta, so this is another quartz, uh, another quartz model. Um, I don't mind having a quartz model, but I do prefer the automatics. I didn't bother to change the date on this one just because, you know, being quartz, there's no, you know, you're gonna see that the second hand isn't moving. I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Tag uh, with Tag Heuer. Uh, to be honest with you, my uh, my father had a bunch of Tag Heuer's, and I've always kind of enjoyed the bracelet that looks kind of like in that style. And I do think it's got a good, clean look. I do like, a, you know, a fair bit of it. Uh, but I always uh, have a lot of trouble with... Uh, this one I actually bought brand new. Uh, but part of what I have trouble with the brand itself is that it ends up being... Uh, 
overpriced for what it actually is at its price point. So realistically, this is one of those watches where you'll buy it and then almost immediately the second you walk out the door, its value drops by half or more. Um, I still like having it around, but this one is probably going to be on its way out at some point. I, I will put another ba a new battery in it so that uh, its next owner will have a couple of years before they have to go and replace it. But um, I have always had a Tag Heuer in my collection. Um, I may replace it again at some point, maybe with an automatic, but for now, uh, this one here will probably uh, go to another home at some point. All right, so next up is another sentimental favorite. Uh, I've got a nice uh, a vintage Seiko 5 here uh, with day and date. Um, again, I really do have a thing for the silver dials, kind of the classic. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about this one, to be honest, is just that the bracelet is a bit on the flimsy side. But to be honest with you, uh, this one here kind of qualifies more than anything as kind of a, a beater watch with another one that I've got. I can literally just put this on anytime if I'm not really... Um, if I don't really want to worry about the watch so much getting scratched up and dinged. To be honest, with the in the life of this watch, it's been scratched up and dinged a bunch of times, so one more scratch is really not going to do it in. Uh, but it is nice to have watches like this in the collection for that purpose, so I do enjoy keeping this one around. And I still like the, the clean design of it, uh, so that's the reason why it sticks around. Another one that qualifies kind of in the beater watch category for me. So this is a uh, De Beaufre Ocean One, uh, which is basically was a, uh, a related brand to Steinhardt and very much uh, is an homage to the uh, Rolex Submariner. Um, to be honest, I did I do like a few things about this one. Um, obviously, you know, immediately looking at it visually, you can see that it, how di how directly it was inspired by the Submariner. Uh, what I do like about this one, though, is that it is a 42 millimeter uh, example. Uh, and to be honest, uh, given everything and the price point, so I can tell you the bracelet is solid on this thing. You know, it feels like a real you know piece of metal when you have it on your wrist. Um, it's built. It's been like a tank for me. I actually uh, a couple of days before I shot this video. I accidentally bumped the table that this was sitting on. So this wasn't sitting in the watch box at the time, but it was uh, out and about. And it was sitting on the table, and I accidentally bumped the table, knocked this to the ground, and it landed directly on the, uh, on the crystal, uh, right on the floor. I picked it up, uh, wiped it off, and then it continued ticking just like nothing happened. Uh, I couldn't even see an additional scratch on it. Uh, to be honest with you, though, I will tell you, that this one has taken quite a beating over time. Um, I've scratched up this thing a bunch of times. I don't know if you can make that out, a lot of scuffs on the bottom. But this it really qualifies. This is a watch that I can just put on and I really don't have to worry about it. And at the same time, uh, to be honest, I think at the time I bought it for maybe about $400 brand new, um, it has been solid for me, so it really does have its place in the collection, if nothing else, because it's good, solid, reliable, and I can pretty much put it, use it any time that I might be in a situation where I really don't want to ding up uh, one of my uh, nicer watches. So the next two that I'll talk about are the ones that I kind of wear day to day. Uh, this one's the, the other beater. Uh, the next two are not in the beater category, definitely. Uh, they're ones that I do like to use day to day, and they're kind of the centerpieces of my collection at this stage. Second from the top, so I have the two-door classic day date with the champagne dial. So a couple of things I really love about this one, to be honest. This is more of a, it's almost a dressier type watch, but it's still got the two-tone bracelet. And it has, you know, the kind of the aesthetic, really. Um, it gives you that nice day date function. Uh, but to be honest with you, what I like about it more than anything is that it does have you know, the kind of the Rolex quality. Uh, this one does use, I believe it's based off of an ETA movement. Um, it's been changed, I think, a little bit by Rolex. My, to my recollection, I'm going directly off memory. Uh, but the thing I like most about it is that you get, you know, the great aesthetic, you get the good, good solid quality, but it's at a fraction of the, of the price of buying a Rolex day date. Um, also, I do enjoy the size of this one, and I like uh, very much like the look of it. But this is the one that I'll wear a lot of times uh, when I'm just at work underneath my shirt uh, shirt sleeves. And I really do still like looking at this dial, and I love the way the light comes off the dial. Um, and then I do like having the day and date function. So it serves that purpose very well, and it, is, it was the immediate keeper as soon as I got this one, along with the next one that I'm going to talk about here in a second. Uh, now, before I change that up, I will show you one more thing. So you can see you've got the, uh, oops, upside down. Let me do that. There you go. So you got the two-door bracelet. I've actually gotten a couple of scratches in it, so I don't baby these things. Uh, but I do very much like this watch, and I like uh, kind of the value that I feel that I got for, out of it for, for what it is. 
So the last one will be my other favorite watch in my collection and then uh, kind of I'll talk about kind of where I want to go with this collection going forward. All right, so lastly, I have kind of the uh, co-jewel of my collection to go along with the Tudor. Uh, if uh, It kind of goes back and forth between this and the Tudor, of which is my favorite to wear, but I will wear this most days if I'm not wearing the Tudor or one of my, uh, or one of my beater watches. Uh, this is the Omega Planet Ocean. Uh, this is the pre-ceramic. So to be honest with you, I do prefer this one to the ceramic one. Um, I, I like everything kind of... Uh, the way this uh, the design came out, I like the orange on it, which gives it a nice bit of color. I like the whole you know the whole aesthetic with that. I like the bracelet that it comes with. I feel it's good and solid. Same thing as the other one. I've pretty much scratched up the bottom of that already a fair bit. Um, but like I said, I do wear these watches day to day, so I, that's to be expected. I don't baby them, but at the same time, you know they're meant to be worn. So I very much love a lot about uh, the way this watch was designed. And I was very proud when I was able to just, uh, you know, just put all the money aside and go and pick one up for myself. Uh, this one I also got brand new at the time, so I got to put all the scratches on it myself. So between this and the Tudor, that covers most days that I will wear. I will also wear the Beater watches a little bit as well, with the uh, first couple that I showed you kind of be staying in the watch box uh, kind of by themselves. So more than anything, uh, basically between this and the Tudor, I started to kind of focus my collection in on certain specific pieces that I really wanted to add uh, that met some kind of, uh, you know, a gap in the collection. Different types of watches. So this here is kind of my, uh, you know, kind of daily wear, kind of a diver model. Uh, the Tudor is a little bit dressier, but not full. I don't really think I would call it a full-on dress watch. Uh, that's one of the gaps that have to be filled out, but that's something I'm going to talk about here in a second about where I want to take the collection going forward. There's the collection and now the only question left then is where do I go from here? So as I said in my comments a moment ago when talking about these two, these two are my daily wearers. They're really the ones that get the most wrist time followed by this one here and this one here as my two beater watches. Um, the rest of these, these three here on the side, they basically kind of stay in the watch box and don't really do anything anymore. So I'll kind of shift them over. So. Really, these are kind of the four core. Uh, they get the most use and the most risk time. Uh, for me, though, it's now less about just having another diver or having another uh, similar because there's a lot of similarities, a lot of stainless steel bracelets here. Uh, what I really want to do more than anything next is to add a, more of a formal kind of dress piece, but I'm also really interested in kind of filling in the gaps. I have the day date function and the rest of them either have day date as well or just the date function. I really want to have a little bit of variety in kind of uh, the complications that the watches have. So among my next goals, and I've already started kind of to work towards one of those, hopefully uh, by the summertime I should have a, a box opening to add to the channel. And uh, just a quick note for anyone watching this video that is used to more of my Blu-ray videos, uh, one thing will not affect the other. Uh, you're not really going get to start getting flooded with watch videos because while I have a great passion for it and I enjoy them, uh, realistically, I don't have the budget to just go out and buy any watch that I want, and I don't really review watches for a living, so it's more than anything just whenever I get something that I'll add. Hopefully in a year I'll be able to do another one of these collection videos where the whole thing will look a little bit different. But for now, my next goal is to add more of a dressy watch, and then I do have kind of an idea for something that I would like possibly by year end. We'll see. More than anything, it's about time, and it's about how that fits into the budget. Uh, but this is where the state of the collection is right now. These are the main four that I kind of focus my attention on, and then these will be the main four that I'll be adding to, uh, hopefully, as time goes on. So, anyway, thanks very much for watching the video if you got to the end of it. Uh, you know, please like, subscribe, uh, you know, certainly comment if you have any opinion on any of these watches or maybe your own collection. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.